Hey everyone, welcome in to a, another daily editorial here on the KE Report. We're chatting with Jordan Royburn, founder and editor of the Daily Gold. Now, Jordan, we usually stick to the precious metals and resource uh, markets and stocks broadly, which we will today, but I want to compare these markets, the resource markets, to what we're seeing in a lot of the other sectors and other markets. First and foremost, though, I just have to ask, in terms of this general rebound and rally that we have seen in the precious metals and resources broadly, including the underlying stocks, look at GDX, GDXJ, SIL, those have moved nicely from a bottom just a week or two ago. Are you encouraged about this move by the resource stocks, still considering that really everything has moved up in tandem? Well, I think you said the key phrase there, which is everything has moved up in tandem. And so there, because of that, therefore, I am less encouraged than I normally would be. We have to recall the last couple of weeks, precious metals, the miners specifically, they became extremely oversold. I mean, I think I mentioned GDXJ was the most oversold it had been since late 2014. I mean, that's really, really significant the large cap miners or GDX and the Huey were not quite that oversold, but pretty close to it. So, I mean, e even in a negative market for precious metals, you'd expect some kind of a bounce. We're getting that. Obviously, the question is, is this going to extend? I mean, did we pass the bottom? Uh, I wish I knew for sure. But circling back to what you said, I think with everything going up together, that makes me a little leery that this is the start of something big. I mean, my, my hope is that we do see markets sell off at some point. Precious metals get taken down, but that they don't make a new low and they're able to stabilize. And we see the stock market make a new low. And uh, obviously that would at the same time you'd have the market would be discounting a shift in Fed policy. So that's what I'm hoping to see over the next couple of months, but you never know. I mean, markets don't always work out as you would like them to. So, I mean, it's, it's nice to see a rally and some breathing room for precious metals. And I think, you know, the macro is kind of slowly moving in, in the direction that favors precious metals, but, you know, we need to see a lot more there. We need to see even stronger inversions, inversions on a some different curves that haven't inverted yet, worse economic data, the stock market, you know, roll over at the 200 day moving average, which it's coming up on. But those things I think could help strengthen precious metals uh, fundamentals a little bit more. But I think it's, it's, too, there's just, it, it's too early and there's not enough evidence to say that you're really encouraged, you know, unless you have a crystal ball that I don't know about. Yeah, Jordan, we don't have a crystal ball shop here, but it is always nice just to get your thoughts on how you're looking at it. And to your point about the markets eventually rolling over, everybody's making a big to-do today about the CPI reading coming in a little less than expected. And therefore, they think the Fed looking forward you know, will be less aggressive. But we have to counterbalance that with the fears of the economy slowing down and the recession haven't just disappeared or evaporated. And we are seeing some signs like the oil prices pulling back some weakness in the housing market. Despite the strong jobs number, there's other metrics that suggest otherwise that there's a little sickness under the surface in the labor market. So if we were to see that economic slowdown start hitting this fall, maybe September, October, timing with that next rate hike, do you think that could be the part where things would diverge, where the general markets could roll over this fall and where the precious metals in that kind of an environment would take the lead? Yeah, absolutely. I think that makes a lot of sense. And you know, remember that markets lead markets are a discounting mechanism so you know these the stock market it could start to get hit or maybe it starts underperforming gold more significantly again before you get confirmation from uh economic data and news i think that that's definitely something to look for over the next couple of months because you know markets are always going to anticipate that before most people know what they're actually anticipating so, yeah, I, I completely agree with what you said in your scenario. I think that's the preferred outcome that I think 
precious metals really need. I mean, if you want to see precious metals go into a real bull market like I obviously do and have been talking about for months and months and months, you're going to need to see more economic weakness, you know, more stock market weakness. That and, and it could it could put the Fed in a real pickle if inflation doesn't. I mean, even if it just stabilizes at let's say five percent or four percent. I mean, the Fed obviously doesn't want. I mean, they're realistically they're not going to be able to hike probably above the mid threes. You know, maybe they can get in another hike or may, maybe two, but realistically, they're just they're not going to be able to catch the rate of inflation unless it really in the scenario where it really crashes. And that's only happening when you have a severe recession. So I, I think the macro is slowly moving in favor of precious metals, but we definitely have to, to watch carefully over the next couple months because maybe we'll get some signals that the macro is going to move e even faster in the direction of precious metals. Jordan, let's refocus on the charts here for the U.S. equity markets. It sounds like you're very closely watching that 200-day moving average, which for the NASDAQ is still another about 5%. For the S&P, I'm seeing that still. It's not nearly as much as the NASDAQ, but a couple percent, let's say, a little bit higher. But that 200-day moving average is moving lower you have to consider the S&P in just under two months has gone up 15%. NASDAQ's gone up just over 20%. What else should we be watching for on these charts? What's critical to understand about the U.S. market setup? That's a really good question. And not to give an evasive answer, but we also have to watch the bond market. Um, if we see long-term yields falling significantly and we see more curves inverting, that's going to be uh, or that's going to have negative implications for the stock market and the economy because usually not not always but usually the bond market uh, can lead the stock market so that that's something I'm watching every day carefully uh, you have the the uh, the curve of or the yield spread between the three month and the 10 year that's another one that a lot of people have talked about and that I think intraday, a uh, couple days before we had that employment report, intraday, that thing came down to only one basis point. And I think today it's around 50, you know, it, it rebounded, it's steepened for a little while. Now it's coming back down. I think today it's it's about at 15 basis points. So if you get an inversion there, again, that's the 10 year versus the three month, that would be significant. It's definitely something to watch. And, and with the bond market as a whole, I mean, if the if more money moves into bonds and you have yields coming down and you have the long end coming down, you know, really fast, that's going to be a negative sign for the stock market, even if the stock market can hang around the 200 day moving average for a little while. But in the bigger picture, if we look at the the worst bear markets like, the you know, we've had three secular bear markets. There's been two major bears that have been part of those secular bears two cyclical bears. Uh, and so if we're following those worst uh, six bear markets, they rally up to their 200 day moving average and roll over an average of about seven and a half months in. And that's basically exactly where we are right now. So it's kind of eerie how close it is to history. But if, if we're looking at the points where, I mean, th this is this is a key marker especially in terms of time, because if you look at a lot of like corrections in bull markets that didn't become like full blown bear markets, this is kind of also where they end kind of seven or eight months in, they start to strengthen again and the market rallies back to its highs. I, I would be really, really shocked if we see that in the stock market over the next couple of months. I, I just think the bearish scenario is more likely where it's probably going to roll over at some point, you know, if not in the next couple of weeks, then probably in the next couple of months. So yeah, circling back, I, I would say the bond market is, is going to be an important tell with respect to the stock market. Also, you know, watch gold against the stock market, obviously, but gold against commodities that if you look at gold against the CRB or gold against oil, that's something that's really started to strengthen in, in recent weeks. And so, you know, we've already seen gold. I mean, gold is 
strengthening against you know some assets and markets but over the next month or so if we see gold really strengthen a lot more against oil for example that that's going to be another negative sign for the stock market and the economy yeah jordan it's always helpful to use intermarket analysis and pit one asset class against another and and see where the correlations come in another technical factor you've written about though to your subscribers and i'd love you to unpack it here just a little bit more is why you place so much importance on the 40 month moving average and how you look at that as a as another tell not just for the precious metals but the general markets well if you just look if you pull up a monthly chart of the S&P and if you pull up a monthly chart of gold and look at the 40 month moving average and just go back decades you can see how significant it's been i mean for example the 40 month moving average for gold i think was resistance in 2001 2002 that time frame and gold was able to move above it and never look back gold also bottomed in 2008 at the 40 month and also gold had a little pullback in 2019 before the fed cut and then gold broke out and also if we look at the last month or so it had a good bounce off the 40 month moving average so if if the bottom price is in for gold and we're never going to see it go lower than the 40 month moving average marked another low and it's it's the same with the stock market i mean more more interesting with the stock market is for the most part during secular bull markets the majority of the corrections bottom or they they don't don't go below the 40 month moving average so if we look at since 2009 or so i think the only time it went below was during the covid crash but then it only lasted for a month or two. The market went right back above it. And so if we're looking at when secular bears started, like 1929, 1968, 2000, those bear markets, those cyclical bear markets became secular bears, or at least gave you the evidence that they were going to be secular bears when they lost the 40-month moving average. And so if we look at the S&P, that's exactly where it bottomed in June, at the 40-month moving average. And so that's it's that's going to be really significant over the next couple of months if we see the stock market roll over and retest that low and then fail and go below and trade towards the lower 3000s or wherever in that scenario that's giving you significant evidence that the market is probably in a new secular bear and we you know we know how significant that is for gold I mean that that's been the missing link over the last five years, I mean, we've had you know decent performance in gold and in the gold stocks. I mean, there's been some decent moves, but you haven't had an extended period of outperformance. You really need you need the S and P in a secular bear for that, you know. And those coincide with the best moves that we've had in gold and silver as well. So that that's been the missing component of the last five or six years. So that's why the next two or three months or even six months. It's such a critical time because we can see some things develop here that give us significant evidence that, okay, we're in a new secular regime here and gold's going to go much, much, much higher. You know, on the stock market's going to go sideways during that period. So the 40 month is going to be critical for the stock market coming up over the next couple months. Jordan, I find this so interesting because it sounds like you still don't have all the confirmation that you need within the charts to say that this is a secular bear market and it could keep going lower. This kind of middle range that we're at right here, still leaning bearishly, but you haven't gotten all the confirmation that you need from the charts. I think that also ties into the fact that we haven't exactly seen one sector completely crash and fall out of bed and lead to all this selling. It's been, again, kind of an orderly sell-off across the board. Is that a missing component? One sector, one area truly falling out of favor and then pulling everything down with it. I mean, that, that's a really good observation. I'd have to go back and look at the late 60s. I think we're seeing a lot of similarities to the 1960s. And I think even in the scenario, like let's say we're not going into a secular bear market and the S&P somehow, you know, maybe it does a double bottom, it comes down, but it doesn't make a new low. So that secular bull in the 60s, I mean, it, it ended in 1968. But what's really interesting is valuations peaked in 1966 
And if you look at the 1962 peak in the S&P to the 1968 peak, the S&P was only up 50%. So the stock market was still trending higher in the mid to late 60s, but it, it really slowed down significantly. And if you look at things like gold stocks and oil stocks, I mean, they really, in the mid to late 60s, they really outperformed the stock market significantly. I, I'm not saying that's going to repeat, but I'm saying that's one, a potential outcome here. If, I'm, if we're looking at a third scenario where basically resources outperform, but the stock market, it's, it's a secular bull can somehow continue, you know, for another three or four years. That's one scenario. But in regards to what you're asking, Corey, it's interesting. I mean, I don't have the answer. I'd have to go back and look at all these bear markets. I mean, I'm sure there, there's probably a few out there where it wasn't just one sector. And may, you know, given what you're saying, maybe that prevents the stock market from declining. I mean, it, it's fallen 24%, you know, top to low. Maybe that prevents the, the market from falling, you know, more than 35%. The fact that you don't have one sector completely falling apart like you had in the last several cyclical bear markets. I mean, off the top of my head, I'm trying to assess what it could be. You know, it's it's probably not going to be from the, the commodity related sectors. I mean, those are too strong. And 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 given that, that kind of will prevent a 50 percent bear market. Uh, it'll prevent one of those. But, you know, obviously the housing sector, the financial sector. I mean, there's some issues there, but it doesn't look like they're completely falling apart. But that's a really good question for, I would say, a technical analyst who really has a detailed, significant grasp of history going back 100 years. So it might be something I'll have to look at myself. Fair enough, Jordan. It just uh, popped into my head when you were breaking down what the charts were telling you, because we're hearing just so much bearishness about these markets. But Again, a lot of that is predicated on what people think the Fed is going to do, what that means for investor confidence when the charts, uh, you know what, you outlined a couple key areas for us to watch outside of just that 200-day moving average. Jordan, great chatting with you as always. Thanks for sticking a bit more to the charts today and sharing what you think of that relationship between especially precious metals and the U.S. markets. Jordan, I hope you have a great rest of your week. We'll chat again next week. Thanks for your time today.